Hi everyone, I'm Lana Zak. Thanks for joining us. The CBS News Weekender starts now. But first, U.S. officials say Iran is on the brink of launching an attack on Israel, a direct attack on Israeli. And Weijia joins me now. So tell us, what is the Biden administration prepared to do if Iran follows through with his strike? Well, Lana, that really depends on what an attack results in, right? I mean, it is one thing to continue to support Israel, to give it all of the aid it needs to defend itself and to uh, respond to it if it is only Israel that... And we, uh, we all know that Iran has several proxy groups in the region. Could we see those groups play a role in this expected attack? Well, that is one big outstanding question. Weijia, thank you. Sure. Israel is already facing attacks near its border with Lebanon. Our Deborah Pata is in Tel Aviv. For more, CBS News Face the Nation moderator and chief foreign affairs correspondent Margaret Brennan joins me now. Margaret, President Biden has said that he expects military action sooner rather than later. And CBS News has learned that Iran is planning to attack Israel with a barrage of rockets and drones. I'm wondering what you can tell us is the latest that you're hearing. Well, Lana, we know uh, from our Pentagon reporters that there are more. Appreciate you providing all of that important context so that we can better understand this. Thank you. Thanks, Lana. Back at home, a stolen big rig led to a deadly crash in Texas. Katera Winfrey from our CBS affiliate in Houston shows us what happened. And Robert joins us now from Palm Beach, Florida. So it's already illegal to vote as a non-citizen. Efforts like the legislation that Trump and Johnson talked about on Friday have been attempted on some government levels before. So how big of a problem is this really? How likely is it to succeed? It is already against the law to vote in a federal election. All right, Robert Costa, thank you. Coming up after the break, Vice President Kamala Harris. Some of you are already acutely aware of this. Allergy season is upon us. Yes, it's the medical center. So, Dr. Brooks, great to have you. Is allergy season, in fact, worse this year? Thank you so much for having me. And actually, it's getting... Lasting longer for those of us affected by it. Our symptoms, it sounds like, could be even worse. But does it also mean that people who potentially didn't have allergies in the past may have seasonal allergies now? So some can be developing new allergies. So we usually say as allergists that whenever you move to a new... So kids, the younger they are, typically will develop environmental um, indoor allergens first. Hmm. Um, but allergies, how to minimize those symptoms. Are there any new innovations in treating allergies and their symptoms? So there's three categories, as I would raise uh, eye drops, all of which can help reduce symptoms. They don't necessarily always treat them. We also have sublingual, which is a tablet. That's as a, as a way to help eliminate people's allergies, sublingual. It can be used. I imagine for children, especially the idea of allergy shots will be really unappealing, but the idea of taking a tablet and having it dissolve underneath your tongue would be much better. Most people do prefer that option. Well, springtime not only means allergies, it also means wet weather. Meteorologist Jackie Jarris from our partners at the Weather Channel has the weekend forecast. Hey, Jackie. It's been a heck of a week with tornadoes and flash flood emergencies. And now our next storm system is already waiting in the wings into the Pacific. You can see this huge swirl out there over the open waters, and this is going to work its way across the West and then move into the nation's midsection and a very significant severe weather event is expected to unfold Monday and into Tuesday. So this energy will work its way through the four corners, bringing active weather to California, snow into the Sierra. But by Monday, we're going to be seeing that moisture getting pulled out ahead of it. In addition to that, our temperatures will be on the increase and priming the atmosphere so that when this area of low pressure at the surface develops, storms are going to be developing individual supercells that could produce large tornadoes, large hail, and damaging winds. All of this is expected into the plains. This could be developing even late on Monday, continuing into your Tuesday, and then we'll look for areas in the Midwest to have similar threats. For more in-depth coverage, you can watch the Weather Channel on cable and live on your favorite TV streaming device. All right, thanks, Jackie. Well, more than a half a million accounts compromised. Well Welcome back to CBS News. I'm Lana Zak. Here's a look at our top stories. A White House official says that the U.S. is adjusting its posture in the Middle East as it monitors tensions between Israel and Iran. 
For analysis, we are joined now by CBS News national security contributor Sam Vinograd for our weekly national security recap. So, Sam, let's just start off. What are Iran's capabilities? Well, the U.S. intelligence community estimates that Iran has access to the largest ballistic missile stockpile in the region. At the same time, Iran and its proxies have a large stockpile of cruise missiles, rockets, and other forms of aerial projectiles like drones. Now, if we look at Israel, Israel has a sophisticated and multi-layered air defense system that is designed to mitigate those aerial projectiles at various altitudes and at various speeds. Israel has a large arsenal of weapons. Of a larger escalation. Well, from a global counterterrorism perspective, there are really two buckets of international terrorism threats overseas. First, Iran trains, equips, and funds a vast web of proxies in the region that have a history of attacking uh, the U.S. military and others in places like Iraq, Syria, and elsewhere in the region. We also know in the aftermath of the ISIS Khorasan Atana, it is possible but not that likely that an international terrorist, a foreign terrorist organization would try to send operatives here to conduct an attack. What FBI Director Ray said earlier this week is, in fact, that the biggest threat from a foreign terrorist organization to the homeland right now is individuals here in the United States being inspired by what they're seeing. Director Ray, in testimony this week, said that the number of investigations into domestic terrorism has more than doubled since 2020, and that's primarily individuals with anti-government motivations and racially and ethnically motivated violent extremists. Well, also in Washington this week, several meetings between the U.S. and Japanese leaders took place. How does this partnership impact national security? The Japan state visit was a major advance when it comes to the security and safety of the Asia-Pacific region. President Biden and Prime Minister Kishida were focused on showing a united front in the face of an increasingly aggressive China, and they succeeded. The final U.S. government chartered evacuation flight out of Haiti arrived in Miami Friday afternoon. Archaeologists are still discovering new things about Pompeii. Remember Gwen Stefani's hit 90s group, No Doubt? Well, the band is reuniting at Coachella this weekend to share the stage for the first time in nearly a decade. The annual two-weekend music festival began Friday in Indio, California, and this year's headliners are Lana Del Rey, Tyler the Creator. Well, still ahead, water is running out of Following up on a story we covered a few weeks ago, Mexico City, one of the world's most populated cities at nearly 22 million people, could run out of water in just months. Isabella Guerra joins us now from Mexico City. She's an investigative video journalist who's been following the situation. Florencia, it's great to have you. What happens, though, when day zero actually comes? Hi, Elena. Thank you very much to talk about... Only about those solutions and why they're so difficult, but how tourism plays into this water shortage? How tourism? Yes. Yes. Tell us anything more about how the government had re has responded to that unrest and their plans to try and provide people with safe drinking water. Yeah. Archaeologists have uncovered never-before-seen ancient artwork in Pompeii, Italy. Video released. Well, that does it for us. Up next, more of the day's top stories. I'm Lana Zak. You're streaming CBS News.